I'm back from vacation. Living in the waning days of a currency's world dominance creates a rumor mill environment. People are just waiting for something critical to happen. So I'm sure you've heard of the petrodollar expiration viral news story. Is the status quo of the petrodollar safe? Or is there still an angle to this fabricated story that signals a new standard on the horizon? Nothing lasts forever, but sometimes people in the dollar system forget that. Let's remind them. Shooting at some food and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. It's Sir Ulrich and happy first week of summer to everyone watching. I hope all you Bitcoiners find epic ways to spend the extra daylight hours. But tanning in the sun ain't the reason my signal meter is yellow. The mainstream media has decided not to report on the viral internet story claiming the 50 or 80 year petrodollar deal has expired. That's because there's no expiration to the deal. It's not a formal contract with a period of performance. Instead, it's considered a strategic understanding with a series of ongoing arrangements that have been maintained through mutual interests and diplomatic relations. Before I get into the multi-decade relationship centered on reliable energy, I have to give credit to Marathon Digital Holdings as a leader in Bitcoin mining, helping to add another variable to the global energy narrative. Under the ticker symbol Mara, just like its name suggests, slow and steady win the race when they are in it for the long haul. Regardless of the market trend, they continue to stack Bitcoin and grow their miner fleet. Check them out. But first... The U.S.-Saudi Joint Commission on Economic Cooperation was established on June 8, 1974. This by a joint statement issued and signed by Henry Kissinger, the U.S. Secretary of State at the time, and at the time Prince Fahd al-Saud. People are keying on this date for the viral story, but it's not at all related to anything that would resemble the petrodollar. But a parallel, less advertised deal was struck at the end of 1974 where the U.S. promised to buy Saudi oil in dollars and provide the kingdom military aid and equipment. And in exchange, the Saudi kingdom would invest billions of their oil revenue into U.S. treasuries, thus contributing to financing the U.S. government addiction to spending. This sounds much more akin to what is recognized as the petrodollar, and it still continues to this day unabated. This is because the deal that remains secret for 41 years is based on a mutual strategic benefit. Frankly, as long as both parties have what the other needs, why should either desire an arbitrary expiration set when the decision makers today were children? Does the U.S. need Saudi oil? Yep. The U.S. normally has about 20% share of the world's annual oil consumption. However, the Saudi Kingdom has 14 times that for oil reserves and is more than capable of being the main source for the largest consumer. But now look at the other side. Does Saudi Arabia need the U.S. military? While the U.S. military is the apex fighting force in the world, its growth is a direct relationship to its time and place as the sole benefactor of oil being priced in dollars for decades. Revenue from selling dollars to other nations to buy oil. Revenue from Saudis and other nations buying U.S. treasuries. Use that revenue to build a bigger military. Offer the trigger end of that bigger military to other nations as a form of barter. Or offer the muzzle end of that same military. This is what the Old Republic secret police from Star Wars would call aggressive negotiations. And when I got to them, we went into aggressive negotiations. Thank you. Aggressive negotiations? What's that? Uh, well, negotiations with a lightsaber. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but the USA isn't the military singularity it was 50 years ago. Russia is now 80 years removed from a debilitating World War II and 33 years since the Iron Curtain has been lifted. And there has been 75 years of stable Chinese dictatorship. While not equals, no one can argue that the Delta or Gap has not closed drastically as these countries have had decades to build. This means competing militaries have more and more to offer. The USA ain't the only show in town. Saudi Arabia, like a pretty girl in a bar, is going to have the guys pulling out all the stops to fight for her attention. 
many countries would be likely willing to offer complementary deals, turning KSA's experience into a buffet of powerful suitors. People can pretend the dollar is strong, but it's only comparable to other dying currencies. They're living in a 2D world where time is not an input. Now compare the strength of that dollar now to when the USA and KSA started this whole relationship in 1974. It's incomparable. So now that we can safely assert the KSA could use a little bit of any and every large military as a protector, how does that affect dollar prospects of being forcefully dominant? Well, you can't dominate what you can't sanction. The USA can't sanction energy trade if countries make their own deals outside the dollar network. The USA can't extort the Saudis if two, three, or more competing military-heavy countries are ready to supplement if the USA decides to play hardball. The game continually returns to what is the true essence of wealth. It's not the depths of your dollar stack, but it's the depths of your optionality. Now, How does Bitcoin tie into this? Well, for one, no money gives you more optionality than Bitcoin. Don't look at it now as simply a new asset. Assess Bitcoin at its potential versus the dollar at its potential. Bitcoin is borderless and anti-inflationary. It's hard capped at 21 million and you can send it anywhere in the world. The dollar has been the one world currency for a half a century. And how many people take their cut before you send your value to its intended destination? The BIS, credit card networks, regional banks, the government, now I know that story a couple weeks back being false may disappoint some because they want to see the dollar tank quickly. But this is actually a better situation if you want to see Bitcoin succeed. The dollar representing the strength and reliability of the United States will compete against other nations bringing their own value offering to a potential relationship with the apex oil producer. Well, El Salvador being a Bitcoin country will likely drive the normalization of Bitcoin as an accepted form of payment for oil. If they do, so will that medium become a simple onboard for any number of other countries that have their own stack of Bitcoin to be used as payment as well. As government currencies inflate away compared to Bitcoin, the amount of oil that can be purchased with Bitcoin cannot be understated. And it will surely be a topic at the forefront of a future oil market without the petrodollar. Now, it is feasible the likes of the USA, EU, Russia, and China, they probably will opt for their sovereign currency to pay for their oil. But what about a country like Jamaica or Thailand? What benefit is it to them to pay a global superpower intermediary fees for their oil when they can just leverage an agreement by a future El Salvador and make that transaction peer country to peer country? Imagine all emerging advancing nations adopting a Bitcoin standard for oil transactions, making the KSA's job of balancing the oil of a future deglobalized world a bit easier to handle and digest. That sounds like a mutual benefit to me. You guys, if that very realistic future timeline doesn't make you bullish, I don't know what will. I am Sir Ulrich, like my father before me. Aloha, and happy Bitcoin bro summer.